Hello friends, in politics, personality cults and ideologies play a significant role in shaping the dynamics of power and public opinion. While these concepts are distinct, they often interlace to influence the functioning of democracies around the world. Let us understand the two concepts and their applications in the real world. A personality cult is a phenomenon in which an individual, usually a political leader, is idolized and revered to an excessive degree. This veneration often transcends the leader's actual achievements and merits, creating an aura of infallibility and unquestionable authority. Its salient features are discussed here. First, it is excessive adulation and glorification of the leader. Second, suppression of dissent and critical thinking. Third, propaganda and media control to reinforce the leader's image. Fourth, cultivation of a mythical narrative surrounding the leader's life and accomplishments. Let us take just two examples to illustrate the above features. Mao Zedong, the founding father of People's Republic of China, was the center of one of the most pervasive personality cults in modern history. The cult of Mao reached its zenith during the Cultural Revolution, which occurred between 1966 and 1976, a decade. It had a profound impact on Chinese society, politics, and culture. The origins of Mao's personality cult can be traced back to the early years of the Chinese Communist Party or CCP. Mao's leadership during the Long March, which occurred between 1934 and 1935, and his strategic vision during the Chinese Civil War, 1945 to 1949, established him as a revolutionary hero. After the People's Republic of China was Founded in 1949, Mao became an enduring cult figure. In the 1950s, the CCP launched a series of propaganda campaigns to elevate Mao's status and cement his authority. Mao's image became ubiquitous. It appeared on posters, in newspapers, and even on everyday objects like cups and plates. The media portrayed him as an infallible leader a visionary thinker and a savior of the Chinese people. Mao's writings, particularly the Little Red Book, became sacred texts studied and recited by millions of Chinese citizens. The cult of Mao reached its apex during the Cultural Revolution. It was a decade-long political and social upheaval which Mao launched to reassert his control over the party and the country. The Red Guards, a massive student-led movement, played a crucial role in propagating the cult of Mao. They carried out a campaign of destroying the four olds. And these four olds were old customs, old culture, old habits, and old ideas. The campaign involved violent attacks on perceived enemies of the revolution. It also desecrated historical and cultural artifacts. During this period, Mao's image became even more pervasive. His portrait hung in every home, school, and workplace. The Red Guards organized mass rallies where participants would wave Mao's little red book, chant slogans, and perform loyalty dances. Mao badges, pins, etc. were worn as symbols of allegiance to the chairman. The cult of Mao had far-reaching consequences for the Chinese society. It suppressed critical thinking. Any questioning of Mao's authority was counter-revolutionary and led to severe punishment. The cult fueled the excesses of the Cultural Revolution. The Red Guards and other zealous followers of Mao engaged in violent purges, public humiliations, and the destruction of cultural heritage. Even after Mao's death in 1976, his legacy continued to shape Chinese politics and society. Then Xiaoping emerged as China's paramount leader in the late 1970s. He had to navigate the challenges of reforming the country while maintaining the legitimacy of the CCP, which was still closely tied to 
Mao's image. In the decades following Mao's death, the Chinese government has sought to distance itself from the excesses of the Cultural Revolution. Today, Mao's portrait continues to hang on the Tiananmen Square and his mausoleum remains a place of pilgrimage for many Chinese citizens. However, the cult of personality surrounding Mao has been significantly toned down. Apparently, the CCP has recognized the dangers of excessive idolization and the need for a more pragmatic approach to governance. Vladimir Putin is another interesting case study. The Russian president Vladimir Putin has had a significant influence on Russian politics since he first took office in 2000. Putin's personality cult has been carefully crafted through a combination of media control, propaganda and political maneuvering. This has helped him maintain a tight grip on power for over two decades. Putin's administration has ensured that the media projects his image in a positive light. State-owned media outlets and pro-Kremlin news channels consistently depict Putin as a strong, decisive leader who can protect Russia's interests and restore the country's global influence. Putin's public persona emphasizes his masculinity and physical prowess. He is often depicted engaging in outdoor activities such as hunting, fishing, and horseback riding, as well as practicing martial arts. This image resonates with many Russians who see him as a strong and virile leader capable of defending the nation against external threats. Putin's personality cult is closely linked to Russian nationalism and anti-Western sentiment. He has positioned himself as a defender of traditional Russian values and a bulwark against the perceived encroachment by the Western influence. This has helped to foster a sense of national pride and unity among Russians. Putin is portrayed as the embodiment of Russia's resurgence on the global stage. His high approval ratings have been consistently above 60% for most of his tenure. This has enabled him to consolidate power and marginalize opposition figures. The cult of personality surrounding Putin has made it difficult for potential challengers to gain traction. They are often portrayed as unpatriotic or working against Russia's interests. Putin's assertive stance on issues such as the annexation of Crimea, intervention in Syria, and alleged interference in foreign elections has been widely popular among Russian citizens. They see him as a powerful leader willing to stand up to Western powers. This has allowed Putin to pursue a more aggressive foreign policy agenda, even in the face of international criticism and sanctions. However, the reliance on Putin's personality cult has also raised concerns about the long-term stability of the Russian political system. Critics argue that the concentration of power around a single individual has weakened democratic institutions and smothered political competition. This has made the country overly dependent on Putin's personality leadership. This may hurt the interests of Russia and its people in the long run. An ideology is a set of beliefs, values and principles that shape an individual's or group's worldview and guide their actions. In the political context, ideologies serve as the foundation for various movements, parties and policies. So, an ideology is a coherent and structured belief system. It is prescriptive because it offers solutions to the issues facing a nation. It is a powerful tool for mobilizing and uniting individuals around common goals. But it has the potential for encouraging dogmatism and rigidity. Ideology plays a significant role in all three political systems. These are democracy, communism, and military dictatorship. But its relevance and manifestation vary in each case. In democracies, ideology shapes the political landscape and provides a framework for policy making and public debate. Different ideologies such as liberalism, conservatism, socialism, and environmentalism compete in the marketplace of ideas. 
This allows voters to choose the vision that best aligns with their values and interests. For example, in the United States, the two main political parties, the Democrats and the Republicans, represent different ideological positions on issues like the role of government, social welfare, and individual rights. Again, in many European countries such as Germany and Sweden, social democratic parties have successfully promoted policies based on the ideology of democratic socialism. This emphasizes social welfare, economic equality, and collective responsibility. Ideology is central to communist system. As we know, communism is based on the Marxist-Leninist ideology. It emphasizes class struggle, abolition of private property, and establishment of a classless society. Communist regimes use ideology to legitimize their rule, mobilize the population, and guide policy decisions. For example, in the Soviet Union, Marxist-Leninist ideology was the foundation of the Communist Party's monopoly on power. It justified the centralized economic planning, suppression of individual freedoms, and promotion of the global communist revolution. Again, in China, Maoism served as the guiding ideology during Mao Zedong's rule, shaping policies such as the Great Leap Forward and the Cultural Revolution. Ideology is less central in a military dictatorship. Military dictatorships prioritize order, stability, and preservation of the military's power. They have less use for adherence to a specific ideological framework. However, sometimes military dictatorships align themselves with particular ideology. For example, in Chile, during the military dictatorship of Augusto Pinochet between 1973-1990, the regime embraced neoliberal economic policies. These were influenced by the free market ideology of the Chicago School economists. Again, in Argentina, the military junta that ruled from 1976 to 1983, espoused a nationalist ideology. It emphasized traditional values, anti-communism, and the suppression of left-wing opposition. Therefore, an ideology is highly relevant to both democracy and communism. It provides a framework for political action, shapes policy decisions, and influences public debate. In democracies, competing ideologies allow for a plurality of views and peaceful transfer of power. In communist systems, a single dominant ideology is used to legitimize the ruling party's power and guide policy. In military dictatorship, ideology is less central, but it can still play a role in shaping the regime's policies and justifying its actions. Personality cults and ideologies can strengthen each other. Ideologies can validate and justify the power and influence of the venerated leader. The leader can become the personification of the ideology, facilitating the mobilization of support and the consolidation of power. However, personality cults and ideologies can be at odds with each other. The leader's actions and choices may stray from the core tenets of the ideology, leading to internal tensions and contradictions. The passing or ouster of the revered leader can create a power vacuum, revealing the shortcomings of a system overly reliant on a single personality. Democracies need to counteract the adverse effects of personality cults and extreme ideologies. They should safeguard the autonomy and efficacy of key democratic institutions, including the judiciary, media, and civil society organizations. It is essential to cultivate a culture that encourages questioning, debate, and critical analysis. This would help resist the uncritical acceptance of authority and dogmatic beliefs. They should foster an inclusive environment that respects diverse viewpoints and enables constructive dialogue across ideological boundaries. It is important to establish robust mechanisms to ensure leaders are held accountable, prevent the misuse of power, and uphold citizens' rights. Historically, 
आइडियोलॉजी हैज ए मोर एंडिंग इफेक्ट ऑन ए नेशन पोलिटिकल कल्चर वाइल्ड पर्सनैलिटी कल्ट कैन हैव ए सिग्निफिकेंट इम्पैक्ट ड्यूरिंग द टेन्योर ऑफ ए करिस्मेटिक लीडर देयर इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफन वेन्स वंस द लीडर इज नो लॉन्गर इन पावर इन कॉन्ट्रास्ट आइडियोलॉजीज कैन शेप ए नेशन पोलिटिकल लैंडस्केप इंस्टीट्यूशन एंड पब्लिक डिस्कोर्स फॉर सेवरल जनरेशन वाई डू आइडियोलॉजीज है मोर एंडिंग इफेक्ट फर्स्ट आइडियोलॉजीज कैन बिकम डीपली एम्बेडेड इन ए नेशन पोलिटिकल इंस्टीट्यूशन लीगल फ्रेमवर्क एंड पॉलिसी मेकिंग प्रोसेसिस फॉर एग्जाम्पल मेनी कंट्रीज हैव इनकॉपरेटेड द प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ लिबरल डेमोक्रेसी लाइक द सेपरेशन ऑफ पावर्स रूल ऑफ लॉ एंड इंडिविजुअल राइट इन टू देयर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन एंड पोलिटिकल सिस्टम सरपासिंग द इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ स्पेसिफिक लीडर्स सेकेंड आइडियोलॉजी ऑफन डिराइव फ्रॉम ए बॉडी ऑफ आइडियाज theories and philosophical traditions that can be examined discussed and reinterpreted this intellectual legacy allows ideologies to evolve and adapt to changing circumstances thus ensuring their relevance and longevity for instance the works of thinkers like john locke karl marx and frederick hayek continue to influence political thought and inspire new generations of activists and scholars third ideologies can attract different age groups by tackling core societal issues such as power distribution and the individual state dynamic this multi generational appeal allows ideologies to transcend the lifespan of individual leaders and become a lasting feature of a nation's political culture fourth unlike personality cults ideologies can endure even when leadership and political situations change for example even after the fall of the soviet union communist ideology remains influential in political movements and parties worldwide adjusting to new contexts and challenges however it is important to note that personality cults can have a lasting impact when they are closely intertwined with a particular ideology for example mao zedong's enduring influence stems from the fact that his personality cult was inextricably linked to maoism the ccp's adaptation of marxist leninist ideology leaving a lasting imprint on china's political culture and policies long after his passing again while personality cults profoundly impact politics ideologies imprint more enduringly on political culture by becoming institutionalized fostering intellectual legacies appealing across generations and showing resilience despite leadership changes however when personality cults fuse with particular ideologies the cult figures influence persists for decades or centuries by shaping national political landscapes